AWS keeps on dropping bombs, and this time it's about Aurora Serverless V2. And they're making it actually serverless, which is a really good thing. Now, AWS just released a detailed blog post where you can read all about this announcement, but I already read it for you, so let me just give you the gist of it really quick, and you can check it out if you want all the extra details. So let's start with the problem. Why does this even matter? What did AWS try to solve with this new feature? So previously, in the old behavior of Aurora Serverless V2, the minimum amount of Aurora capacity units, or ACUs as they sometimes call them, these effectively translate to the amount of power your instance has in terms of compute memory. The minimum amount of ACUs was 0.5. Kind of an odd number, but whatever. This roughly translated to about $40 per month. Now, not actually serverless, if you ask, well, pretty much anyone. If something doesn't scale down to zero, I wouldn't call it serverless. I don't know why AWS even called this serverless in the first place, but that's a different topic. Now, with the new behavior, this has been changed to what you would probably have expected when the feature was initially launched. Uh, this has been changed to zero. Now, you don't have to pay anything kind of I'll put a little bit of an asterisk beside that as I'll explain in a couple of moments uh, but essentially Aurora will scale down to zero in terms of the compute so you don't have to pay for it uh, after prolonged periods of time of inactivity. So there's a lot of nuance to this feature in terms of when Aurora will actually scale down and when it will wake up so let me explain to you how that works really quick and it's also worth noting that this feature will not work in certain configurations for your Aurora database we'll get into that as well. So let's assume that we have you know, time going forward here. And I'm just gonna label some colors here. We'll say that blue is gonna be storage because there is a storage element of Aurora. And orange here is going to be in terms of compute. There's two different uh, layers to think about when you're talking about Aurora. Now say that a user initiates some connections and they're kind of performing queries on your database at some point here, let's say. And you know they're continuing to do that over time, and then at some point they stop at this point here, right? We'll call this the active period, active. Now before Aurora pauses itself and scales itself down to zero, there's a period that it has to wait before it will do that, right? So this period here, we'll call this the wait period, wait period. And this is a configurable value. You can configure this to something between five minutes five minutes and 24 hours, 24 hours. So this is a period of time that your database can wait with no activity before it shuts itself down or scales down to zero. Afterwards, the database will pause itself, right? So this entire period is paused up until which a new connection request is initiated. Say a new connection request is initiated at this moment. Now at this particular moment, and this is not gonna be drawn to scale in any way, you have to wait approximately 15 seconds, 15 seconds right here, 15 seconds, before your database actually becomes up and running and is able to receive traffic or respond to traffic. So uh, with this feature, you kind of need to be a little bit aware that uh, it's not suitable for all cases. You're going to have a pretty heavy cold start of 15 seconds. Uh, could be useful for like dev workspaces or dev environments where, you know, you want to save some money, you want to scale it down to zero when people go home uh, or have the day off and then kind of wake up when people are, are actually at work and using it. That uh, may be a, a good suitable use case for this. Um, but, you know, with the 15 second wait period to wake up, that's not going to meet um, you know, a lot of people's expectations if you're hosting things like an API. Maybe okay if you're doing also like data processing as well, if you can tolerate that delay, but for most cases, probably not. And then after that period, that's when your database will be up and running. So we can add this uh, green line here to indicate that. Now, in terms of what you're charged for, right? We, we had this kind of blue to denote storage and orange to, to denote compute. One thing to note is that you are always charged for storage, even during the paused period and in the wake up or active period. So that never changes. You're always paused for storage. Um, so it's, you know, scale down to zero, but kind of. Um, but in terms of compute, that's where you're going to save, right? That's where you're going to save 
uh, your money. So you'd be charged in the period that I've uh, kind of colored in here orange and also uh, after the wake up period here. So that's kind of the, the general gist of how the feature works. Now, one thing to keep in mind for those of you that are users of RDS proxy, which is probably quite a few of you since it um, makes it easier to maintain your connection pool into your RDS database, especially for those of you that use Lambda functions, because if you have many concurrent Lambda functions, you can have a whole lot of connections that are hitting your RDS uh, or your Aurora database all at once. It is not supported in this feature. Why? Well, RDS proxy will maintain a connection to your database at all times. And as we just saw, you know, it's not going to have a period like right here where there's no connection. So it's not going to have an opportunity to turn itself off. In addition, there are some other things that you should probably be aware of. There are numerous pause conditions where pauses may not necessarily transpire or your database won't pause itself. That's something that you should read the documentation a little bit closer. There's a lot of kind of fine print that you should be aware of um, if you're using this feature. And similarly, on the other vein, there's a lot of wake up conditions. So periods where the database will wake itself up. It's not always necessarily due to activity or new requests that come in. Could be things like changing database parameters or um, if you have replication on, there's like a whole bunch of conditions uh, where wakeups may be initiated for you. So that is essentially the gist of this new feature. Really happy to see this actually. This is something everyone pretty much has been asking for for a really long time. The only real caveat is, you know, this thing right here, the 15 seconds is kind of a bummer um, it's not really something like DynamoDB where it scales all the way down to zero and then it can instantly scale back up effectively. Um, so maybe they can improve this in the future, but it is what it is. Let me know what you think of this new feature in the comments section below. And thanks as always. I'll have more AWS news videos as we continue to approach reInvent. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.